Hello, Mega Maniacs. Mr. Mega Man fan back for the retro hunting adventures with a box of goodies from Japan. I'm going to open it, and we may not get to all of it in this video, but we'll get to as much of it as we can. So let's go ahead and get this package open. Well, this is a big brick here. Looks like almost all of the loose cartridges all got bundled together in one big brick so let's go through those first shall we nuts and milk a very early famicom game that never got ported to north america so looking forward to playing that one Got another Famicom cart here. Hyper Olympic. This one is Portopia Renzoku Setsujin Jiken. That's a lot of words, but hopefully it's comprehensible. And if not, it was a buck. And this one was... Ninja Coon. I know this already just from looking at the front of it. Let me get the label off of here. So, four Famicom games and a bunch of Super Famicom games. Go through all of these. This one is Ultraman for Super Famicom. Sadly, I don't think Ultraman was the best of the bunch, but for a dollar, I won't complain about it too much. It is a side-scrolling belt action game. You move from left to right, playing as Ultraman, fighting the monsters, and the monsters are fighting you. You throw punches and kicks and occasionally shoot beams or weapons, but it's really not anything that I would say that unless you're a die-hard Ultraman fan that you would need to own. And it also got a North American release, so it's not even exclusive to Japan. You can find this one just about anywhere. And this one is a sumo wrestling game. Super Ozumo Nesendai Ichiban Sumo. Number one sumo. From what little I could glean online, this one was released exclusively in Japan in 1992 by Namco, which explains why you see Pac-Man and a ghost monster on these fluttering flags. There is obviously some cross-branding and a cross-promotional effort by the company to put their characters into a sumo game. As for the game itself, it's another belt action game, although this time using the sumo tradition of trying to get your opponent out of the ring or vice versa, and it's pretty much any way you can get them out of the ring that you can come up with. You can push them, you can slap them, you can just bull rush them. Whatever you have to do, just get your opponent to move backward and step out of the ring. If they fall out of the ring, so much the better. If they just step on the line and step out, that counts as a point. Either way, you have to use your bulk and your muscle and your skill to get your opponent to lose the match. This one is Battle Dodgeball Gundam. The combination of those three words intrigued me and it was only a dollar. Battle Dodgeball Gundam. As strange as it might seem, this one can actually be considered an Ultraman game too because it's a crossover between Ultraman, Gundam, and Kamen Rider, so... You get all the characters from those different series playing dodgeball with each other. That's as wacky as I was hoping it would be. You catch this ball or you get knocked down by it and you wing it at the other team and they either catch it or get knocked down by it. And you have a certain number of hit points and when those are exhausted, you're knocked out of the match. It's not disappointing to me in the slightest, especially for only a buck. This is one of those games that probably could have been ported over to North America and would have done quite well. Zero Four RR Champ. 
This is a drag racing game. I'm looking forward to trying this one. Sadly, even though it was billed as a drag racing game when I looked it up before buying it, I never actually got to do any drag racing because the story mode has lots of plot exposition. Apparently, we're at the airport either being picked up or picking somebody up. And then we go home and talk to what I assume our mother and father. And the father has a very stern look on his face and he's reading the paper. And mom is like cheerful and smiling and supportive. And it just feels like an anime minus the animation. It's a lot of cutscenes with some trickery and some moving mouths to make it look like it's animated, but obviously saving a lot of memory that would be required for frame by frame animation. So it's almost an Inuyasha trick where you see a still frame and the camera pans left or right and the character's mouths are moving, but they're not actually moving around that much. It's interesting. I'll give it that. This one is Super Puyo Puyo 2 Su. All of these that you see in this stack were all just $1 each. I have a feeling if you're a retro gaming enthusiast, you're already familiar with the Puyo Puyo series, but if you're not, and this is the first time you've ever seen one, it's a puzzle game where you match up colored blocks, and when you get four of them connected together, either in a group or an interconnected line, they disappear and the bigger the chain is the more points you get and if you can combo them together by putting the colors in mismatch order so that when one disappears the other falls down on top of it and forms another block and it disappears then you score more points and you also drop more garbage on your enemy's side that they have to get rid of or match so it's a strategy puzzle game that is easy to learn, not easy to master, especially at the higher levels when the puzzle pieces start falling really fast and your opponent sends you a lot of garbage, but it's a lot of fun. And this one is even available on Nintendo Switch's online service. So you don't have to own a physical copy, but for only a buck, I just couldn't refuse another Puyo Puyo game. And if you like what you see here, you can also pick up games like Puyo Puyo Tetris. Super Donkey Kong Country. Probably exactly the same as Donkey Kong Country, but for $1, I thought I would check it out and see if there were any version differences or not. And other than some Japanese text throughout the game, I really couldn't find that much in the way of differences between this Super Donkey Kong and what I know and you may know as Donkey Kong Country. Just a name change, some text change, but the stage layout seems to be exactly the same. The cutscene that you get when DK discovers his hoard of bananas has been stolen is the same. The one-up that's hidden up at the top in his home that you can jump on the tire to collect is the same. The letters K-O-N-G that you collect for another one-up are the same. It's all the same. It's Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong going on their adventures to get their bananas back and defeat King K. Rule. So if you know Donkey Kong Country, you'll like this. And if you don't know Donkey Kong Country, well, it's cheaper than Donkey Kong Country because it was only a buck. Super Fire Pro Wrestling 3. Told my co-host, Great Sudoku, that I picked this one up and... He was pretty pretty happy to hear that because he's a big fan of the Fire Pro Wrestling games, which led directly to games like WWF No Mercy, which is basically a reskinned port of a Fire Pro Wrestling game. I think an English language patch is probably going to be necessary for me to make a lot of progress in this game because I had to just bull my way through the menus until I finally got a match to start. And then, of course, by that time... I wasn't even prepared for the match because I hadn't looked up a set of moves or how to execute them in this particular Super Fire Pro Wrestling game. I did manage to hit a few moves here and there though, like my opponent attempted to suplex me and I countered him and reversed into a vertical suplex of my own, and I was also able to pick him up and slam him down to the canvas, but when I tried for running the ropes and doing a drop kick, I didn't succeed in that, and I got knocked down quite a few times too, so... Obviously, 
practices required to become a Super Fire Pro Wrestling 3 master, but I don't think I'll mind battling my way through the HWA. And now for some of the smaller stuff, we've got Game Boy games. Rockman World 4. With a very nice label. It's loose, but I can live with that. Complete in box. May have to wait till another day or another seller. It's a good start. Honestly, it seems to be just about as hard to find complete in box Game Boy games in Japan as it is in the United States. I'm guessing just due to the age and the fact that they were such small cartridges that people didn't want to keep the boxes because they were so much bigger than the games themselves. It's bound to happen with stuff like this. So who knows when I'll ever find a complete in box Rockman world, but I now have all five of them loose thanks to Japan for you. And I couldn't think of a better way than to spend Mega May completing that set, so... Awesome that Japan for you was able to get me the last two that I was missing. I got Rockman World in my last shipment, and with four and five in this shipment, the set is complete. Not sure why I had two and three for so long and not one, four, and five, but there you go. Rockman World 5 with my cat's namesake Tango right on the label. The only Mega Man game or Rock Man game to feature a cat. Hi, Tango. And just like Mega Man 5 in North America, Rock Man World 5 is Super Game Boy Enhanced, which means you get a custom border around the screen and you get a choice of color palettes that you can select from that are compatible with the game, so it really makes for an excellent presentation. I understand there's a rumor out there that they were also working on a colorized version of Rockman World 4, but I don't know if that was canceled before a publication or never even got past the development phase because I've never seen it. So as far as I know, it doesn't exist. If there's a prototype out there, maybe Proto Dude knows about it. So I would check rockmancorner.com if you want any hope of that showing up because weird things do show up from time to time, like... The Game Boy port of Rockman Board was actually found during one of those Mega Leaks, Giga Leaks, Data Leaks, whatever you want to call them. That was unknown to exist up until it was found. This one's called Selection Arabashi Mono. Could be great, could be terrible, but it was a buck either way. The Rockman World games were definitely not. So far as I can tell, this seems to be pretty standard role-playing fair. You explore the countryside, you have encounters with monsters, you fight the monsters, you get gold and experience and level up. It's just a little bit clunky because you're not moving on an overworld map. You're like moving on a map by turning and rotating to the direction you want and then pushing the button to move in that direction. So I wouldn't even call it tank controls. It's like one step removed from tank controls. Tank controls would be an upgrade here. But it seems interesting enough for a buck. It's a very angry looking Pikachu on a base that rolls back and forth. I don't know. I just thought this one looked adorable because he looks so angry. You don't usually see Pikachu with... That fearsome of an expression on his face. There were actually two in there. Renoa Hartley was in there. And Titus was in there. So, let me get this off of Titus. For some reason, he's promoting Coca-Cola. There must have been a brand association between Squaresoft and Coca-Cola. Titus Square... Enjoy Coca-Cola made in China. Hashtag not sponsored by Coke. You know a heartily square Coca-Cola made in China. So maybe this was just a promotional venture 
Coca-Cola did with Squaresoft to promote Final Fantasy or Squaresoft did with them to promote Coke, but... And that's what I said about saving the best for last. This is, this is a big one right here. Rockman X3. I know I got one loose the last time, but I decided to one-up it and go for one that was even nicer. Complete inbox. $38. Now you compare that to what Mega Man X3 goes for. Good God. It's not even close. It's, I mean, it's not a perfect box. There's a some creasing here and there. But no tears. Well, maybe one little tear in that corner. But honestly, for... 20 plus years old, what, almost 30? It's in really nice condition. Ooh, 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 ooh. That is such a good feeling, pulling out a Super Famicom game complete. Rockman X3 manual. A little worn, but hey, it's in there as it should be. That is so freaking awesome. And the cartridge itself. Still in the original plastic bag that it was manufactured and sold with. Whoever previously owned this one before me cared about keeping the whole set together intact. So I am very grateful to them for that. There was a lot of different things that I wanted. The Rockman World Games, Nuts and Milk, but this is the cream of the crop right here. Oh man, that is so pretty. Gonna have to get some Super Famicom protective plastic boxes just for the few complete inbox Super Famicom games I have. I got Mario and Wario, a couple of Ranma one half games, a Puyo Puyo game, and Rockman 7 and Rockman and Fort, and a few others. Need to get some protective boxes for all of them.